Hey guys, Zach here, and welcome back to another action figure review, and today we'll be taking a look at the Jurassic World Hammond Collection Juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, I mentioned this in my uh, most recent community post, but I'll talk about it briefly here. Um, I got new lights for recording videos, so hopefully the lighting should be, you know, better in uh, upcoming videos. Um, and I also upgraded my phone. I upgraded my phone to an iPhone 15, which means that a lot of the things that I used to use my phone for, like recording, like my microphone is no longer compatible with my new phone, which is, or it's not compatible with my new phone, which is very, very annoying. I'm not going to lie. So this video and maybe like the next few videos will be, you know, done without using a mic. So please let me know how the audio is, you know, just let me know if it like, you know, could improve. You know, if it's fine, then I'll just stick with this. But if not, you know, I don't mind, like, you know, looking into getting, like, a better quality mic. You know, I've been meaning to because the one I've been using is very cheap. So, yeah, if I do need a mic, then I'll get something much, much more high quality than what I had before. But I digress. Anyway, I've talked about this uh, three or er, two times before. But this figure, the Hammond Collection Juvenile Stegosaurus, the Hammond Collection Dennis Nedry and John Hammond, you know, like all four of these guys, um, they were unofficially released in May, but for some reason they're just now starting to release them. They're just now starting to release the, the Juvenile T-Rex and Stegosaurus, and for some reason uh, they delayed the Juvenile Stegosaurus for me. Um, I was going to do like a big like double review for like you know both of them but because i only have the juvenile t-rex i'll just you know just do a video like for you know just each of them individually so yeah it is a little annoying but you know it is what it is so yeah anyway yeah i don't really know what else to say so let's just get right into this like usual uh to start this review we'll take a quick look at the paint and the painting on this figure well, it's a Mattel figure, so I'll just go over everything, and I'm sure you guys will, you know, understand what I mean by that. Um, first off, right off the bat, I just want to say, um, most of this figure is casted in this, like, bright, like, green coloration, which I think looks nice, but for some reason, uh, the body here is ever slightly, like, more bright than, like, the rest of, like, you know, all the other pieces on this figure. Like, the tail here is, like, a little darker than the body. The legs are a little darker, the arms, the head and neck, like, it just looks kind of weird. Like, it's not too noticeable, but it's noticeable enough to bring up. So that, like, right off the bat, I think that's a little weird. But anyway, uh, the back of the figure here from the back of the head to the center of the tail here, not the end of the tail, because that would be too cool. Uh, we have this uh, very, like, dark green, almost like a blackish coloration for the stripes, which, again, I think looks nice. Uh, they're airbrushed, and usually, like, in a lot of cases, I think, like, airbrushed, like, stripes usually look good, and here is no exception. I think these look, uh, very nice. Uh, the toenails here are painted this, uh, this, like, glossy, like, black, uh, excuse me, blackish color, which I think looks okay, but unfortunately, the fingernails won't be painted, which is a little disappointing, but it is what it is. Uh, the underside of the figure has this, uh, yellowish, uh, hue to it as well as the underside of the neck, and the, you know, like, towards the, you know, back of the jaw here, there's, like, this, uh, bit of purple here, which, you know, I think looks nice, too. Uh, going to the head here, uh, we can see that, you know, again, we have more of, like, that pinkish color around the eyes, which is accurate, and the eyes here are painted orange with black pupils. I think they were a different color in the movie, but I could be wrong about that, don't quote me, but, um, yeah. They still look good. You know, for the most part, I think, like, looking at this figure head-on, like, the eyes are a little, a little cross-eyed, but to be fair, you're not really going to notice that when you look at the figure from the side, which is how I'm sure a lot of people are going to, you know, like, take pictures of this guy in photography. So, it is what it is. Uh, the bottom jaw here is casted in this, uh, this whitish, like, greenish coloration, which I think looks okay. Um, unfortunately... Uh, some of the uh, pink from the inside of the mouth uh, kind of bleeds onto the bottom jaw there, which is a little frustrating. And also, like, on the nose here, there's a little bit of that, like, pinkish coloration, too, which 
again, just looks kind of weird, but it is what it is. Uh, speaking of the inside of the mouth, though, uh, the roof of the mouth, the tongue, and the membranes here are painted this uh, nice um, pinkish coloration, which I think looks good. And the last thing I want to point out, uh, the teeth here are painted this uh, yellowish whitish color, which I think look, I think they're painted decently. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for the painting on this figure. Actually, no. I completely forgot about this. So, when I got mine in the mail, um, as you can see here, like, in the mouth, there's, like, that little white spot there. And same with the roof of the mouth. The glue, like, sealed the mouth shut. So, I actually had to, like, go in there and I had to, like, pry the mouth open. And now there's just this, like, ugly white mark in his mouth. And it just looks really, like, weird. Like, I don't know how that happens. Now, that's never happened to me on, like, a Mattel, like, you know, Jurassic Park figure. So... Again, it's just really weird that that happened to me. But, you know, I digress. Uh, but that is pretty much it for the painting on this figure. Um, the painting, it's not the best. You know, there are definitely, like, a few spots that I think could have been touched up a little more. But with that said, out of all the juvenile T-Rexes that Mattel has given us, this one, hands down, has the best paint job. No question. So, yeah... Uh, the painting on this figure, it's a little rough around the edges, but it's still not terrible. So, I'd say the painting on this figure gets three quarters of a pass. Now, we'll take a look at the articulation. And the articulation on this figure is pretty much the same as, like, literally every other, like, small theropod dinosaur in the Hammond collection. So, I won't really go into too much detail, but I will still show it all off. Uh, the base of the head here. Uh, Junior can look up like so and down like so and this also acts as a swivel The mouth can open like so and same with the neck here. We have a little bit of a swivel here and You know junior can look all the way up and All the way down like so the arms can move outwards like so and move 360 And at the elbows here, we have a bend and a swivel. So, uh, both of the legs here can move 360. We have a bend in the knee here, as well as a little bit of a swivel. And same with this bit here, just a bend and a swivel. And again with the feet, we have a bend. And a swivel. Uh, the base of the tail here, we have a ball joint. And the rest of the tail is a bendy wire. And as you guys know, I am not a big fan of bendy wires. And this uh, figure is no exception. Like, I get it. This is a smaller piece. But maybe, like, at least, like, something in the middle. Or even, like, a segmented joint here, here, and here. Like, again, I know that's a lot for a small figure like this. But... Again, I I just I just really don't like bendy wires and tails. I'm sorry, but I digress. I digress. But yeah, let me just stand this figure up real quick, and that's pretty much it for the articulation. Um, it's good. You know, again, it's pretty much the same as like you know most of the other theropods we've gotten, or the smaller theropods in the Hammond collection. So there's not really a whole lot to say here, but still. Uh, the articulation here is pretty solid, so the articulation here, I'd say, gets a pass. Unlike most of the smaller theropods in the Hammond collection, uh, this figure actually comes with a couple of accessories. Uh, one of the accessories here being a cast, because, you know, in the Lost World Jurassic Park, uh, the juvenile T-Rex has a broken leg, and, you know, of course they're gonna, you know, they have to cast it up, and they included that here, which is cool. And they also included this little muzzle here, or... It's Nick Van Owen's belt, but he uses his belt as a muzzle, and yeah, you know, I do think it's really cool that Mattel included these as an accessory, you know, especially because they don't normally, like, give accessories to, like, other, like, you know, smaller theropod dinosaurs like this. I think the only other, like, Hammond Collection figure that was, like, a smaller theropod that had, like, other accessories was the Dilophosaurus, but besides that, I think, um, yeah, I think it's just this guy and the Dilophosaurus, so, yeah, pretty cool, Mattel. 
Now, we'll take a quick look at the sculpt. And the sculpting on this figure, for the most part, I think looks really nice. You know, some minor things. Um, Now, I'm going to start off really minor here. Um, I think the tail looks a little weird. Like, it looks like, you know, okay, like, you know, at the base here. And then, like, it just kind of... Like, here, like, it's still, like, consistently, like, the same width. And then you get to this point, and then it just, like... That, like, that's when it gets skinnier. It's not, like, a gradual, like, it starts off, you know, decent, and then just, like, you know, gets skinny, like, throughout. It's just, like, you know, like, good, good, and then just, that's when it starts to thin out, which I think looks a little weird. Um, that might have something to do with the bendy wire that they put in it that Mattel really needs to stop doing. They need to stop putting bendy wires in the tails of their figures, but I digress. I digress. Um, I guess, like, another thing to point out, like, the hips here. I think are too wide, but, like, you know, like, designing a figure to, like, you know, move like this, I feel like would be impossible, you know, to not have, like, you know, extended thighs, so this, I understand, and I, you know, I don't really have an issue with, and I guess, like, one last thing I don't like about the sculpting here, like, I don't know why the neck here just looks a little weird, you know, like, I feel like the neck is a little too long, but it's also a little too skinny, and it just looks, like, it does look a little out of place, you know, maybe it's just me, but I don't know. I feel like they could have tweaked the neck a little bit, but I digress. But, you know, besides that, though, uh, the sculpting, I uh, I still think looks very nice. And even the feet, like the feet are a little big, but they, I still think they look like pretty decent on this figure. So, yeah, Um, overall, like a few minor things. But for the most part, you know, I still think the sculpting here looks nice. So the sculpting on this figure I'd say it gets three quarters of a pass. One more thing I forgot to mention with the sculpt that I'm actually just now realizing. Um, this figure, like, the membrane in the mouth here is, like, very small, and it's, like, all the way back here. Uh, instead, it should be, like, closer to, like, this area here. Because, like, as is, I just think that looks really weird. So it would have been nice if the membrane, like, stuck out more so to, like, here. You know, I'm not going to deduct any points. Like, still, like, overall, the sculpting here gets three quarters of a pass. But, so, I just wanted to point this out because I'm just now noticing it. And, yeah, to me, it looks a little weird just having it blank there. Now, we're going to take a look at the detailing. And the detailing on this figure is pretty good. I mean, usually, like, Mattel does a great job with the detailing. But, well, let's just take a closer look. So, starting off at the head here, you know, we can see all the little uh, bits of scaling, like, on the crest here, like, on the snout here, and I think uh, it looks pretty good. You know, the neck here has a lot of really nice uh, wrinkles here. I think they look great. A lot of nice uh, musculature here. You know, again, it just looks really, really nice. And even, like, on the underside, like, yeah, you see the joints, but, like, still, like, all of, like, the, you know, little uh, wrinkles there, I think, are detailed nicely. And same with the, you know, the body here. Again, just a lot of really nice uh, wrinkles and whatnot. Like, the detailing here is, like, very solid. And again, like, the forelimbs here have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of really nice musculature here and whatnot. Like, I think uh, the detailing here in the arms looks good, but, like, it looks better in the legs here. Like, right here, we have a lot of really nice, like, musculature and all, like, the, the little skills and whatnot. Again, I just think look really nice. And we get that really nice detailing all the way down to the, you know, calves here. And even to the feet here. And again, they just have a lot of really nice, uh, just a lot of great detailing here. And again, the tail, just a lot of really nice wrinkles and like, you know, creases and whatnot. And all like little scales and everything, I think are detailed very nicely. And even the underside here, just a lot of nice uh, musculature here. And again, like, the underside of the torso just has a lot of really nice uh, detailing here. Just, like, a lot of really nice wrinkles. And the feet have a fair bit of detailing as well. Also, there's the Jurassic Park logo. So, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it for the detailing here. And overall, I think the detailing here is pretty solid, you know. It's not fantastic, but for what it is, I think it's good. So, yeah. Uh, the detailing on this figure, I'd say it gets a pass. Now, we'll do some size comparisons. Of course, I gotta bring him in. Here is the original Kenner Juvenile T-Rex. It can be a little hard to get this guy to stand because uh, 
His legs are a little loose, but you know, once you do get him to stand, he does stand. So there they are next to each other. Um, I don't know which one I'd prefer, like off the bat. You know, I do like them. You know, they're both like juvenile, like T Rexes from the Lost World. Like this one has that Kenner charm, and this one, you know, has like you know more updated, like you know. I guess, like, designs and whatnot, so off the top of my head, I can't really say which one I like more, but still, here, um, here the both of them are together. Here we have the original, uh, 2018 Legacy Collection, Juvenile T-Rex. Yeah, we've, um, we've definitely come a long way from this guy to this guy, so, yeah. Here we have the Hammond Collection Jurassic Park T-Rex. And I think these two scaled nicely with each other. And of course, like usual, here we have some hand sanitizer right here. And here we have Dr. Billy Grant. Um, the juvenile T-Rex was a lot smaller than this in the movie, but I get why they made him as big as they did because... Making a figure like the juvenile T-Rex, you know, in scale with the human figures would be complicated because, like, you know, a figure like this has, like, a lot of, like, joints and whatnot. So you'd have to do, like, a lot of tampering with, like, you know, the articulation and the sculpting. So I do understand why they made the juvenile T-Rex as big as they did. So, yeah. Regardless, uh, here these guys are, you know, just all together. So at the end of the day, should you get this figure... I'd say yes. I think this is a this is a neat little figure here. You know, like the sculpting and painting, I think could have been touched up a little bit, but for what this guy is, I think this is a really nice figure. Um, you know, especially for that price tag. Uh, this guy only retails for about like fifteen bucks, which isn't too bad. Like you get a couple of accessories too, which I think like also like you know really adds to that you know value to this figure. Like even if like you know they're minor accessories, like. You know, it's still, like, like, you know, like, a few accessories. Like, again, like, it's cool, you know? So, yeah, I do recommend that you pick this figure up. And also, like, you know, like, more, like, Lost World Hammond Collection figures would be great. You know, like, we have the Parasaurolophus and the Pachycephalosaurus, and we just got this guy. You know, and we also just got the Juvenile Stegosaurus. So, who knows? Um, You know, it'd be really cool to see, like, you know, you know, Hammond Collection of all the human characters from the Lost World. Uh, it would be really nice to see, you know, a Hammond Collection adult Stegosaurus. And since we have the Juvenile T-Rex here, I think, like, it's pretty much guaranteed that we're going to be getting the, you know, male and female T-Rex in the Hammond Collection pretty soon. Oh. Well. Damn. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's, that's it for today. Um, enjoy the rest of your week. I'm, uh. I'm kind of sad now.